Hi everybody, Mary Mitchell here. Okay, I guess I can just say Mary. I mean, you know you're on my, <laughs> I know you're on my channel. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I get uh, something in my throat, dust, uh, something, change of the seasons, whatever. <clears throat> I feel like I have rocks in my throat, pebbles. But anyway, I have a very gravelly voice anyway. So um, I ordered a mic. The other one broke. So I hope you can hear me because I want to say a real qu I I'll try to make it really fast because sometimes I know I get on my soapbox. But um, I read something where somebody must have read on Facebook or somebody heard or saw. And I've seen it too where other people are like a certain, certain group, certain artists are like, oh, <clears throat> Porn's not porn's not an art. You're not you're not an artist if you just you know anybody can do that acrylic porn. Okay, well I have a message for anybody, for anybody who thinks that that is a load of manure, and I'm censoring my language. So um, you guys out there, that's not this is for this for anybody who's been exposed to have seen something or heard something where you know um, you've you've, you've you know, feel that, uh, or somebody's made you feel that what you're doing isn't real. It's not real art. Well, you know, it is, it's, 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 it's amazing art. Art pouring has opened doors for millions of people, millions of people who have, you know, who have not had something to, they have something inside them and they want to create and they, you know, they, feel well you know uh, I don't know how to paint I don't know how to draw I can't draw a straight line yada 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 blah 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 so you know we, we get stuck and we think well you know I can't paint I can't draw I've never uh, taken a class or I've never taken a lesson or you know anything like that I can't afford to hire an art teacher you know it's out there for free now for free you don't have to you know you have we have Google, we have the, uh, um, YouTube, we have, I mean, uh, we have Pinterest, we have Facebook. And what Art Pouring has done has opened doors that were never there before for people like you and me. Okay, so having said that, for anybody out there who has heard or has seen or you know, read that acrylic pouring isn't real, doesn't, you're not a real artist, that's baloney. The biggest baloney that I've ever seen. <laughs> well, anyway, um, because after so many decades of not painting, I saw Gina DeLuca's video, and it re and I saw something, and it released something in me, and I went, "Wow, wow! I want to do that. I really want to do that." So I did, and it released in me something that was in there that I couldn't get unstuck, and once I started to pour, I I became unstuck. Truly, I did. It, it, it released something in me. I have paintings all over the studio in, in stages, various stages of things that I want to do with them. Sometimes I resin them. A lot of the times I will embellish them with various mediums that I never had exposure. Didn't even know they were out there. Soft body paste, uh, you know, leafing, metal leafing. Um, I mean, resin painting. Never would have ever thought of that. I found it on YouTube. I found... It, I, my money is, I didn't pay a dime for it, maybe internet fees. And the education I got three years later, you know, um, it changed me. You know, it changed me once I saw what was out there and what I could do and what was available to me and how I could use that to, to, um, you know, to create my own paintings, to get unstuck. So I'll come in here. And I don't know what I want to do. I just know the colors that I'm feeling. I know there's something in me that wants to come out. And I put it down. I take my canvas. I put it down. And all of a sudden, you know, I might see something right away. Uh, sometimes I let it dry and I'll see something you know, weeks later. It doesn't matter. It, it released something in me that couldn't get released before. And acrylic pouring did that for me. Acrylic pouring is so valuable. Uh, whatever you use it for, whether you leave it, whether you uh, do, you know, um, uh, you know, all the, the things that are out there, the various, you know, mediums that you can put in your, you know, your mediums, however you do it, don't ever stop and don't ever let anybody tell you it's not real because it is. It so is. I've created things from that started with an acrylic pour that I never thought were possible before. 
it just opened up a door for me then I walked right through it fearlessly and I didn't do that when I went to school I'm not no, I wasn't fearless but this has made me you know it, it, it challenged me and um, and I just keep at it and that's what you have to do don't ever stop just and don't believe it don't believe what they tell you acrylic pouring has opened the door for millions of people who didn't know how to get their their inspiration to have to get what's inside them out and now what i do when i pour is i go inside me instead of outside of me to create i don't need a book and i don't need uh, you know something to look at to well i do you know I, I i look at things all the time but that's not what gets me going you know I mean, it's back there but what gets me going is action you now coming in here putting it down being you know being um uh, you know, I'll say fearless, but just being, being a uh, faith, having faith, have faith in yourself and don't listen to people who tell you that that's not real, that this isn't real because it is. You're putting something out in the world that's beautiful. Don't you let anybody tell you that it's not because it's not true. And if more people would stop judging and start creating, how nice would that be? I mean, then we'd have even more people, okay, because we all need each other. It just goes, it's a cycle. It's the cycle of art. You can be a teacher and be learning all the time. And when you teach, you're learning because people will ask questions and then you're like, hmm, let me find out. It happens all the time. So anyway, keep going at it, keep going, keep keep putting it out there, you're beautiful. And, uh, and um, let's get this thing going. Boom. <laughs> Have a great day. Okay, we're going to get right into this. Okay, so you can see on the right that I had already started the process. And um, the colors that I'm using, I'm trying to, I've changed, you can see that I've really changed from, uh, I deviated from the colors that, you know, you see off to the left because I wanted more color. I wanted it to be, I thought about it and I was looking at it and I, I it looked a little dull. Uh, to me. So what I did is I took some um, of the of the uh, brighter colors and I kept the copper. I kept the copper in there and I was mixing it into some magenta, uh, some canary pearl yellow. I have uh, Russian uh, pr Prussian blue uh, violet, which I think is Amsterdam Professionals. I'll get back to you on that. It will be in the description. I used um, deep magenta. And so I went over this whole thing and I was trying to keep the center um, darker, but it was so dark. And I, I don't know how, if you can really tell here, uh, but it was just way too dark. And I, notice that I'm avoiding the center of the flower because I, I wasn't quite sure exactly how to do that. But I knew that there was too many. I changed the composition greatly, um, but but please remember though that what acrylic pouring, as I said in the beginning, has done for me is it has given me inspiration. And so, although it looks dramatically different than what I poured, it was the it it was the um, the catalyst of what what I ended up doing. And, and sometimes something gets changed dramatically and sometimes it doesn't, but it offers so much. And this is where it took me on this journey right here. So uh, I, I love it, you know, I really do. So I'm moving along here and I'm, the, the center is, um, I'm brightening it up, I'm brightening the, you know, giving it some, de some perspective, giving it some definition, giving it depth. Um, you know, you can see what I'm doing here, highlighting the top and then I'm kind of having it go down deep into the center, uh, which is what a flower does. Uh, Bahu, look at this. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can see what I did, right? Uh, the dark was just, um, it, it, it just left me cold. I, I, needed, I needed a change. So I went over it with some opaque gesso because the clear gesso wasn't going to cut it. It wasn't going to, you know, the, the darkness still would have come through it. It has its place, but it wasn't here. So I'm, 
you know, I sped this up probably eight times. I just, you know, want you to know. Uh, I put on some colors with a, a big palette knife and then smoothed it into the uh, canvas to, uh, you know, to get it on there and then worked it in. I uh, used a fan brush. This painting up close has a lot of definition, um, texture. The fan brush did that. It gave it these, uh, the lines, you know, the just these ever so slightly, it, it kind of grooves. And um, I'll get up close in, in one of the um, pictures uh, in part three, because there will be a part three. I didn't get to uh, finish the entire thing because I did get to finish the copper leafing, which is in this video. What I did when I saw this, I really liked it. I still knew I had to do the center of the flower. So here I am, I took some chalk and I drew out my lines of how I wanted the petals to look. So how do I do that? I decided to apply copper leafing in between some of the petals where I, um, I wanted it, to, I didn't want there to be uh, a leaf or part of a leaf you know, the background, I wanted it to, um, so applying the copper leaf gave these, gave the petals the definition that I was seeking. And, but I'm not done. I'm not done with that. It, it really just gave it a, a nice, uh, the background uh, behind the, the petals, it really enhanced it. It just, uh, well, you'll see it at the end. I'm so pleased with how it came out. I'm laying my adhesive down right now. Now I have to give you full disclosure. The chalk marks were not a good choice <laughs> to, I should have wiped them off the, the canvas when I was applying the adhesive because what I did is I left, I left the chalk marks on and as a result, the, adhe the chalk marks, the chalk got into the adhesive and it, I guess in, in, in essence, it diluted it. It made it less sticky. So when I went downstairs several hours later, it was not as sticky and I had to redo it. I redid it that, at that moment and I, I let it sit overnight. And then when I came down the next day and I checked it with the side of my finger, it was perfect. So full disclosure there, I just want you to know, don't put any chalk or anything foreign into your adhesive because it won't be sticky. And uh, that was a mistake on my part, but I will never do that again. Uh, we all learn, right, from our mistakes. And it wasn't a big one, so I got lucky. So here I am, I'm applying the um, copper leafing and I'm taking my wax paper and I'm picking up the copper leafing and I'm applying it to the parts that uh, where I want it to be. The wax paper is a great thing to do this with. Once I saw an artist do this, it was it changed. It was a game changer for me. And they make special brushes that you can pick, you know, leafing up with. But uh, this works the best. Absolutely works the best. I keep my uh, the parts that I brush off. I keep in a jar, and I use them again because I use them for effects. And uh, so, but there are larger pieces in there. So what I'm showing you here is I took a piece out and it was all crinkly, but look what happens when you, when you spread some, you put it under the wax paper and you just gently spread it out. It smooths it right back out again, uh, which is really nice that you can do that with this. And uh, so I'm also cutting my copper leafing because I don't need a four by four sheet of uh, leafing on a small part. There's no sense in wasting it. Although, like I said, I do save them, but if I can leave it intact on a sheet, I would rather do that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm cutting them according to what size I think I need. And I came up short a few times, but that's okay. I just went and took another piece and laid it down because you can't see uh, on a piece like this, when you're working with these uh, small sizes, uh, sp small spaces, you you cannot see uh, where it, uh, it begins and where it ends. It looks like just one whole piece. It came out great. I'm very I'm very happy with the way this came out. But another thing, full disclosure, there were uh, when I did take the leafing off, it it was great. It really, I have no complaints. 
but there were a couple, I wanted to go a little deeper down into the flower on a couple of parts, and I wanted to make the lines a little more crisp on a few parts, and I needed to get that corner where it didn't quite stick 100%, way up in, uh, uh, way up in the, um, if, if I was facing, it would be on my left side. If you're looking at it, it's on your right side. There was just a small part of it where the glue just, um, it didn't stick, the, the copper living didn't stick to it. So I just redid that too. And that picture's not in here and the process is not in here because uh, I just did that after the fact real quick. And um, so let's move on. Um, I'm almost done here and I'm going to be doing the absolute very best part, which is to take it off. <laughs> and really, it really is fun to take this off. I have special brushes that I use for that. I bought them. They're goat hair brushes that I got from Amazon. You can probably get them in any art store. But I also bought a makeup brush that I used for, that I used for this as well. It's nice and soft, it's nice and big. And I generally start with a softer brush to see how effective it is. And, and if I feel like I need a smaller, firmer brush, I'll turn to one of the smaller goat hair brushes, but they're still very soft. Uh, the smaller it is, the, the little, a little bit harder it is, and not as soft. And, uh, but sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need one that's not um, as soft. So anyway, here, what, what I'm doing here, and I say this every single time, a few videos that I have out there with this, is I'm burnishing it. And burnishing, as I've said, and you may not have seen another video, but if you're only watching this for the first time, um, burnishing sets the glue, it pushes the glue and it pushes and thereby taking the silver, the leafing and, and um, really pushing it into that canvas, you know, really getting it in there, getting a, getting a, a, a real, um, getting it to really stick. And uh, there's no reason to skip this part. You know, it, it, there's, it goes fast. I use a very soft piece. I use a soft piece of plastic. You can use wax paper. Uh, you can, anything that, anything that you want will give it a different effect. So just um, do a little research on that end. But this plastic works for me and I use it, not, I use it all the time. And I did buy some cheap gloves, but you can use a microfiber, soft cloth, anything that's soft. You want, you want it to be soft because you don't want it to leave lines in your leafing. And uh, so now here we go. <clears throat> the best part, guys, <laughs> taking it off and looking at the beautiful results and admiring what the effects that this stuff can do for your painting. It's great. It's just great. I, I love it. I love it. Um, so when when you see the end when you see the final the result you'll see what i mean it defined these petals without even having the chalk marks on it but um the chalk marks are still on it i have since take them, taken them off which you will see in part three and yes there will be a part three and final part because the only thing i need to do now is I need to do the center of the flower, you know, the middle parts, the <laughs> the uh, technical words are the stigma, I think, and the anthem, and there's something else anyway. I need to get those in there, uh, coming out of the center of the flower. And um, I want to give the petals, you know, the, um, you know, how the center of a petal kind of is raised a little bit. I want to give that I want to give some of that definition, not a, not a great amount. Um, I don't want this to be a photograph. But I want it to. I want to give it a little bit more, and I, I I'm excited about that. Uh, so you can see what I'm doing here, and it's, um, it's I'm almost done. And once that's done, uh, you will see the final result. And then in the next part, which I will start tomorrow, is I will be recording the last part of this painting, and uh, so. Uh, so there it is. You know, it's, I'm trying to think if there's anything I left out. Uh, if you have any questions, by all means, please leave them in the comments. Um, I learned this technique first. I turned, I, I, when I Googled it, to a, a woman, an artist named, I believe her name, Nancy Rayner. 
I think she's in the southwest, I believe, and her paintings are gorgeous. And I learned this, she took the time to create a very in-depth video. So, uh, you know, if you really want to, um, she, you know, she's good. She's real good. Uh, I'm, I'm just doing what I learned from her. Uh, most of this I learned from her channel. And so uh, she really goes into it. She really takes the time to show how, why painting your canvas before you lay the leafing down matters, what it does for it, etc. So here it is, okay? Uh, showing it real briefly, then I'll show you on the can. Now look at what it's done for those petals already. Okay, guys, have a great day. See you soon. Bye-bye.